and welcome to this particular tutorial on wear and tear. Now before we actually start painting it to our aircraft, I want to do a special video just for brushes and demonstrate some different techniques for wear and tear. Now there's hours and hours of videos I'd love to show you on wear and tear and I will probably do advanced tutorials down the road on it, but for the purposes of this library segment or series, I do want to try to keep it down to a minimum. Now, when you look at these stickers here, on the left side, you see how crisp and clean they are. But when you go up to the very top here, you'll see that these have wear and tear. Well, you'll see that the stickers have been ripped up, and they look pretty cool. Okay? So how do we do that? How do we do something like that? Well, you can create your own image, of course, and play around with it. And each time you do a paint, maybe you can drag it over to it. But another way to do it is create a brush. So every time you were to take, say, a paintbrush, and let's say we're on this, I'm going to go ahead and increase my size, and just stamp it. And instead of seeing a dot, you'll see exactly something like this. All right, so let's cover that a little bit. So I'm going to create a new layer, or a new image, Control-N. Now, every version of Photoshop is different. If you have Photoshop CS3, and I believe CS2 too, as well as the ones above, you have different limits for your sizes, your paintbrush sizes. I believe everything below 2000, or CS2, it's 1000 by 1000. But the point here is find out what your max is and use that max. So I'm going to go at 2500 by 2500. And even my resolution, I'm going to jack that up to 300. And the reason being is I want to be able to create my brush once and only once and be ready for what's going to hit tomorrow or next year or next decade. So 2,500 by 2,500 is pretty huge. I think I'll be safe. So I'm going to keep everything else. RGB color, I would really want to use grayscale, but it doesn't matter if I use RGB. And I'll explain that in a minute. So here we are. I'm going to paint a gradient just to get us started here. And let's say, oh, nasty colors. But that'll work. I'm just going to actually make it a little longer in that case. So I'm going to start off by, well, we've covered the pen tool already. So I'm going to click my shapes icon or tool, and I'm going to go up to my shapes here. Now, look around in your shapes. Right now I have others loaded for other projects I've been doing. But you might have a square with curved edges, and that's the one you're going to want. This one right here is a regular square. We don't want that. So I'm going to select this guy, which is a small one I made. And I'm going to turn on my grid. So I'm going to say Show Grid. And I'm going to zoom in here, just one click here. And what I want to do is, with this shape selected, I'm going to choose a black background and double check my brush, subtool, and here we go. So I'm going to just drag myself out a box that I made earlier. And there we go. And I'm going to press T for the text tool, and I'm just going to write in all capitals, CAUTION. And that's actually a perfect font, Arial. You could use that or Calibri, or however it's pronounced. That's another good one right there. And press Control T to transform that, and I'm just going to drag that out here. Now, one thing in dealing with the in dealing with brushes is brushes are only the grayscale, which means black, white, and everything in between. So, you can't save a brush in color yet. But there are ways to colorize it later on, and we'll get into that maybe in a later tutorial. So there we go, I got my caution, and now, for those that aren't familiar with the pen tool, you might be able to just create a box using a cheaper method. I'm going to go ahead and create a box with my marquee tool. Let me zoom out to do this here, and maybe start from this corner here, and go down not so much. Actually, I'm going to probably just keep this short. 
And right there is about good. And, but I don't want the sharp edges, so I'm going to go up to Select, Modify, and then Smooth. And I want more than I'm going to say 50 for my edges. So there we go. I get a nice smooth curve going. Now this isn't going to be as good as what we saw with the pen tool, but not a bad alternate for people that aren't familiar with it yet. I'm going to go to border, and I want to jack up my border to about 20. That's fine. So now I have something to where I could fill with the color on its own layer, and fill that with black, Alt-Tab. I want to fill that a couple times. Deselect it. And there we go. Now, with the text tool again, I'm going to type in just some random text here. Let me think. Dantrix Tutorials may lead to Photoshop addiction. Okay, so I can go ahead and change my style here by clicking on this right here, the middle one, which is centered. And that's what I'm going to want for my sign. And I want to sign this also. So I'm going to grab that text tool once again, go down here and just do my little squiggly and turbine 777. But I don't want that that big, so I'm just going to transform that down. And that's good. And maybe drag that over here in the corner. All right, so I'm done with the grid. I'm going to shut that off. And there it is. And now you can see behind it, I didn't fill in a color. I could. I could fill it in with a gray, and that would be half transparent. And we'll cover that in the Alpha Channel tutorial. But for the most part, I'm ready to save this now as a brush. And it's only going to save what I did here. It's not going to save anything else. I'm going to turn off the background layer. And let's say Edit, Define Brush Preset, and then name it what we want. So I'm going to call this Dantrix, Dantrix Caution. And that's it. We're done. So I'm going to delete everything we did here. And I'm going to turn this one back on. I'm going to press B for my brush tool and find that brush. It'll be on the bottom. There it is. And there's my brush. Now I'm going to undo that and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to shrink my size down here with my left bracket key. And I'm just going to go maybe one there. And I could paint with this also because this is a brush and a paintbrush is used to paint. So I can paint along with this. I can make all kinds of designs with it. I can increase my spacing if I want. Um, and don't think just the caution sign. Think what else you can do with this. Let's say you were doing a picket fence. Make one picket and then drag that straight down. Huh? Come on, think about it. So it's got a lot of power here in creating your own brushes. But let's go ahead and say how do we create that paint or that look that we're after. So I'm going to just click it here, and I want a wear and tear kind of look on this. Control click to create a layer below it. And I want to fill this in with a white. And let's say, actually I'm going to change my brush to, let's say, click on one, and then I'm just going to jack this way up. And way up. And that's probably good. So let's zoom in here. I'm going to click over oh, that brush. I want to get right in the corner here and take out the hard part for me, which is staying in the lines. Shift click over here. Go down to the bottom. Shift click. Didn't quite get that. And do the same thing for here. And again, you're seeing the edges square versus my nice rounded one. So. You could do much better with the pen tool, boys. And there we go. Hit M for the marquee tool. Come over here and fill this. And done. Now I have my nice sign. Now it still doesn't look like a, not a sign, but a label. So I'm going to go ahead and apply an effect to the top here. I want that text to look a little better than that. I want it to look embossed, so I'm going to go to Bevel Emboss. 
choose it. And I'm going to shut off global lighting. And let's find a good angle here. That's good. But now I want to play with my contours. And as you've probably learned by now, these contours are great. Look at that. That's a nice kind of shiny metal. Okay. So say you wanted to go with that and you're not doing a label. You know, that's not a bad option to have. You can play around with these more and maybe even create your own. That's a cleaner metal, not as shiny. And this one, it's probably not showing up in the video, but this is a nice one because it's giving me a lot of shine off the edges here. So do try this one on your own and you might see a really cool plastic wrap kind of look. I like that. But I'm going to go ahead and for this tutorial, I want to do this cool metal look. And I'm going to go to Inner Glow, which might sound odd. But I'm going to set this to a rusty kind of looking color. And that'll work. Say OK. Max out my opacity. And I'm going to bring up my noise a lot. And now hit OK. So now what I'm seeing here, what hopefully you're seeing, is the outside edges are now around that edge. We're getting that cool kind of fading look or paint chipping look. So that's just a small detail that you might not catch, but something I want to add to mine. So not bad. So let's zoom out here. I'm going to go ahead and change that contour back actually to the normal black. And let's check it out now. now that looks better. That gives me a little bit better of a look. Gives me a little bit more rust peeling. And again, this is a rasterized image. So I don't have to stop here. I don't have to stop here at all. You know, let's go to 50% here. I'm going to grab my eraser tool, pressing E. And that's not a bad brush, especially for this. Now right now it's set for max hardness. So if I click, it's going to take everything off of that. You might not want to go with so much. Now you're seeing, because I have that effect on there, you're seeing what it's doing. It's giving it some kind of, you know, bumping to it, adding a lot of bumping. And I don't mean bump mapping, of course. But I want to reduce the size. I'm going to come down to, say, about 60, 60 here. And let's take a look. And I'm going to copy these effects over to my white background by pressing Alt, grabbing that effects, putting it there, selecting that. And let's zoom out here a little bit. And let's start to do some tearing to it, like we just saw. Well, this isn't the effect that I want. I want to go with a much larger bevel for my background tape. So I'm going to say a higher depth. I'm going to increase this to maybe a pillow emboss. Gives me a little bit more speckle. Maybe change my angle a little bit and play with that contour real quick. And that's kind of cool. That gives it a nice really neat paint look to it. And maybe a drop shadow. And the reason for the drop shadow is if I wanted to take a bigger chunk out of it, it's going to show a little better. So I'm going to actually increase my distance a lot. Not that much. And let's check this out. So let me zoom back in and let's look at these paint peeling techniques here. So that's not bad with this particular brush. I interrupt this tutorial or myself to bring it to a close. Now I can talk on and on and on and on and on about these effects, different ways to do it. But the only way you're going to learn is to practice on your own. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I've finished my sign here. And this PSD can be found on the forum where this video is. Video number 16 currently. So download it. Play with it. Go ahead and maybe add some dirt to it. Click on that. Explore 
this layer and I'll be covering how to create dirt like this in the next tutorial when we get into painting our fuselage and maybe add the major dirt to it and here I did nothing more than use a technique we already did with the mask layer mask so it's more it's darker over here and I'm hiding more of it down here but play around with it you know um, maybe select the white layer choose your burn tool over the burn tool and maybe color in some of this area get more of a burn out of certain areas of it you know adds a little rustic kind of look to it maybe color in just a shadow area down on your sign here corner just darken it a bit maybe even go into it and choose a satin and play around with the different contours for the satin this is one that's really powerful I like to go in here actually and grab the satin and move it around to different areas but there's a lot you can do with it and just not enough time to cover them all turn on the water drops maybe play with these we've covered this already in painting with effects but select that layer maybe you want to add another water drop to it choose your brush tool and paint with some water maybe go into the channels control click the raindrop layer and change to a, a selection tool so we can move the selection here maybe add a raindrop to your N fill it with whatever color and there you go it's not going to show the color of course because we have the fill down and if you don't remember that just watch that painting with effects tutorial and there's just so much more you can do with this than I can keep talking about but I can't emphasize enough that you're gonna have to actually do it okay these videos no video no reading no anything is gonna do anything for you unless you actually try it so get out of your paint kit your paint kit is great if you look at the layers and explore what they do you know why is it multiply why is it hard light why is it you know the fill turn down here you know but at the same time you're gonna learn a lot more if you go to like Google images or something like that and just download a rusty looking sign and say I want to duplicate that step one how do I go about doing that alright and that's how you learn and I'd be more than happy to help you with that now also you might want to get some ideas from this and save this as your own sign you know kill the dandrix stuff if you want and you know just maybe turn off a few different things like the background here and maybe the white actually I'm just gonna turn down the fill why not save this just like this as a brush edit define brush preset rusty sign and there we go I'm gonna just go ahead and turn this background on and delete all of these and now get my brush tool out go to that new brush that just took me five seconds and stamp it okay so not bad you can see why go through all the bother of doing this each time you do a stamp why not just save this as is from the beginning all right so work with everything we've covered and I will see you in the next tutorial where we start applying some dirt and using existing textures to enhance our dirt and maybe change some blending modes here and there and I will see you there